Okay, so um, my respect to the SPC sisters in attendance, especially to our St. Paul University System Chancellor, Sister Marie Rosan Malilin, SPC, who made this activity possible. Um, uh, fellow lay administrators, faculty members, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and Pauline Peace. Following my sharing at the SPC Education Ministry Online Congress 2022, some of our schools in the SPU system expressed interest in further learning from the experience of St. Paul University Surigao in our developing efforts to systematically implement outcome-based education. As a disclaimer, this is not the best nor the standard implementation of OBE. This is just a way to simplify, template, and document the whole process. And we hope that at the end of this activity, you will be able to get something out of it. So this webinar workshop is titled Templating and Documenting Outcome-Based Education, Outcome-Based Teaching and Learning, and outcome-based assessment, the St. Paul University Surigao experience. Since we are talking about outcome-based education here, it is but proper that we shall have a clear direction of this exercise. That is why we have the following activity outcomes. So after the webinar workshop, the participants will be able to, number one, Explain OBE from macro to micro perspectives. Number two, design a general or specific outcome-based education framework. Number three, formulate the outcomes for the different levels. Number four, map outcomes from institutional down to lesson levels. Number five, develop mechanism to ensure constructive alignment. Number six, assess and evaluate the achievement of the outcomes. And lastly, implement the realizations for continuous quality improvement. Okay, so we shall have two sessions today, one for this morning and the other one for this afternoon. So here is the agenda for both sessions. First in the morning, we will be talking about outcome-based education. Um, such as understanding the big picture, establishing the OBE framework, and then we will have a breakout session for workshop number one. Um, the breakout session, by the way, will be per school. So I have prepared uh, a breakout room for each um, SPU system school. And then it will be followed by lecture on outcome-based teaching and learning or OBTF. OBTL, um, talking about setting the outcomes, and we will do workshop number two, mapping the curriculum, workshop number three, and ensuring constructive alignment, workshop number four. And then for the afternoon, we will be talking about outcome-based assessment. So we're going to discuss about how to prepare assessment plan, how to develop authentic assessments, and then we will proceed to workshop number five. And then lastly, is just a brief discussion about continuous quality improvement. This is when we complete the cycle and then we integrate the results of the assessment and evaluation for the next batches. So as you know, outcome-based education encompasses OBE, OBTL, and OBA. So for OBE, or outcome-based education, this is the entire concept and implementation of outcome-based education in an institution or department. For OBTL, it is part of OBE, or outcome-based teaching and learning. This is the planning, the designing, and the implementation of OBE in the classroom. And then OBA, which is also part of OBE, outcome-based assessment. This is the assessment and evaluation 
of the achievement of the set outcomes in all levels. So from this diagram, what do you think is the common word? May we ask somebody? You can unmute your, your mic. Outcome-based. Outcome yeah, outcome-based or just outcomes, right? So what then is an outcome? So outcomes are clear learning results that learners must demonstrate at the end of significant learning experiences. Gone are the days when we, when we teachers only do the input process output scheme. Rather, our end in mind is the outcome. So it should be input process output and outcome or IPOO. The outcomes focus more on what has the learner demonstrated or achieved. There are a lot of definitions of outcome-based education. Can anybody give me a definition? Anybody? What do you understand about outcome-based education? May I ask somebody? Just unmute your mic. Or, yeah, identify yourself and then tell me your definition of outcome-based education. Anybody? Are you shy? <laughs> okay, so let us just uh, proceed to the definition of outcome-based education for this purpose, because there are a lot of definitions actually of outcome-based education. So outcome-based education is a curricular reform or movement that focuses on the outcomes by which learners demonstrate or achieve in the lesson or after the lesson after each module, maybe upon completing the course or subject, upon graduation, a few years after graduation, or even the rest of the graduate's life. Okay, so the outcomes come in different levels, not only in the classroom, but also um, the, the entire program itself or the entire graduate himself or herself. So a lot of educational strategies are modeled, tried, and tested. The likes of active learning, team-based learning, flipped classroom, etc. But why do you think we need to um, transform or um, go for OBE, outcome-based education? So why OBE? because of the mismatch in supply and demand of graduates. And we know that there's a gap because of the graduate employability rate, which is a little bit low. Because of the Philippine qualifications framework, because of globalization, because of curriculum reform, which is set in the CMO 46, series of 2012, because outcome-based education is skills-based. And of course, because OBE is student-centered and so on and so forth. There are a lot of reasons why we should embrace outcome-based education. It simply summarizes all the effective educational strategies by focusing on the learner and the outcome of the learner. So how do we implement OBE? How do we implement OBE? So here's the pyramid of five Ps. So we have one paradigm, two purposes, three premises, four principles, and five practices. By the way, please tell me if I'm going too fast. And if you have questions in the middle of my discussion, it will be very much welcome. So for the paradigm, we, we only have one paradigm, which is what 
and whether students learn successfully is more important than when and how they learn something. That's the paradigm. For the two purposes, first, equip students with the knowledge, competence, and qualities to be successful after they exit the education system. And number two, structure and operate schools so that the desired outcomes are achieved or maximized for all students. And we also have three premises. Number one, all students can learn, but not in the same time, not in the same way. Number two premise, successful learning breeds more successful learning. And last premise, schools control the conditions that direct learning. We have four principles of OBE, clarity of focus on exit outcomes of, of significance, expanded opportunity, which, is, um, which deals with support for learning success, high expectations for all to succeed, and design down from culminating outcomes. And we have five practices, define the outcomes, design the curriculum, deliver the instruction, document the results, and determine advancement. So let us zoom in now to the last two Ps principles and practices. The essential principles of OBE are first, clarity of focus, which is equal to the outcomes, the more important outcomes, the strong sense of purpose. Number two, expanded opportunities, which is equivalent to the strategies. So, um, considering the multiple intelligences of the learners and their learning styles. Number three, high expectations or the standards that we set. So we depart from perennialism and essentialism. And number five, designing backwards, which is our curriculum itself. We design down from, from, the, from the institutional down to the lesson level, and then we deliver up. We deliver up by using assessment and evaluation. So if there are four principles of OBE, there are actually five stages of OBE practices, which serve as main basis of ins institutions implementing OBE. So these are the five stages of OBE. One, understanding the big picture. So everybody should be on the same page, on the same boat. Number two, setting objectives and outcomes or breadth. Indeed, the breadth of OBE is the outcomes because after all, we always begin things with the end in mind. Number three, mapping of the outcomes. When these outcomes are mapped from top or general level down to the most specific level, we establish coherence and coupling of outcomes. In this way, we don't get out of our intended outcomes. And number four, the delivery of OBE courses. So as soon as stages one to three are defined, then everyone is ready to deliver. The teachers, the program chairs, the deans. This is where the action takes place, the delivery of OBE courses. And number five, lastly, lastly in the cycle, because this is a cycle, we learn from the mistakes and the best practices also, so that we assess and evaluate to improve further. So again, these are the stages of OBE and institutions should, should be able to carry out this from step one to step five. And this is a cycle. One batch will use this. The next batch will loop again the stages one to five. So what do you think is the best way 
to understand the big picture. What will be the, the, the process in order for you to impose um, understanding of the big picture of the OBE and make sure that everyone is on the same boat, on the same page. So what, um, Deva, um, you have noticed that some of the schools established um, what we call outcome-based education framework or OBE framework. So OBE framework, it is the ultimate basis of an academic institution or unit as to the implementation of outcome-based education across its curricular programs. It is a model by which all the stakeholders base their roles, actions, and activities upon. Furthermore, OBE framework is typically a diagram that summarizes how the institution or department shall plan, design, develop, implement, assess, and evaluate the revolutionary adoption of OBE in the curriculum. This may come with a primer that will lay down the fundamentals of OBE implementation in the academic environment. This framework is communicated to all st stakeholders that are expected to have a common and shared understanding of what and how OBE is implemented in the academic community. So it is important that, that we really establish our own OBE framework in the institution or even in, in a college or in the department because some of the schools implement OBE uh, in a staggered way, meaning they start with engineering and then they go for um, allied medical courses until they um, have their own institutional framework. So what are the components of an OBE framework? So these are the components of an OBE framework. Input, process, output, outcomes. We have to see in the framework these four. The quality process, which is the plan, do, check, act cycle the learner-centered or focused approach, internal and external factors, because we are not an island. We have to deal with also our friends outside. OBE, OBTL, and OBA, that should also be part or shown in the OBE framework. And of course, our institutional statements of philosophy and objectives like the vision, mission, core values, goals, objectives. So these are the components of OBE framework. How does an OBE framework look like? Have you seen an OBE framework? Of course you have seen because some of us are accreditors in Pakokoa or Paasku and we always look for an OBE framework, and this is not new to us. So how does an OBE framework look like? So this is a framework guide. In this case, we have the plan, do, check, act um, cycle. So what are the things that you do in the plan quadrant? These are the outcomes. What are the things that you consider in the do quadrant? These are the teaching and learning process, which includes the course syllabus, the pedagogies, the learning process, and the assessment. What are the things that you will need to consider in the check quadrant? This is the assessment. 
the course, the program assessment, and the institutional assessments. And lastly, the ACT quadrant, which is um, evaluating and then um, using the results of the assessment for the revision or improvement of the learning outcomes, the learning activities, and the learning assessments. So this is a, a very good framework guide already. And nobody will limit you from um, using this um, as your ultimate framework as well. Let us take a look at the um, common OBE framework in, in schools in the Philippines and abroad. So at the left portion, are the inputs from the stakeholders and constituents like students, parents, faculty, alumni, industry, and the companies, the SMEs. And these inputs are processed to become outcomes. Outcomes in the level of institutional like vision and mission, outcomes in the, in the level of program like the PEOs and POs, and of course, the outcomes in the course. And then this, these particular outcomes, when set already, are delivered using a course planning and delivery um, mode of using syllabus, teaching methods, learning activities, assessment tools. After that, we go to the assessment stage which starts with the course assessment, the program level assessment, and the institutional level assessment. And then these re the results of these assessments are evaluated and used again to further improve the, the, the process, which is going back to the outcome. So these um, this kind of OBE framework is used by most, if not all, of the schools in the Philippines. For our SPCEM, um, the framework must take consideration of the following. So we know this already because this is our guiding principle in the implementation of OBE, as these are the set parameters of our SPCEM congregation, I mean, SBCEM ministry. Um, we have the SBCEM OBE framework, like um, the performance components, the five Cs, co conscious, creative, competent, collaborative, compassionate. The core values of Christ-centeredness, charism, commission, community, and charity. And then performance priorities like authentic expression, visionary exploration, quality expertise, relational engagement, and service extension. And then basically the life performance outcomes. Um, our graduates are ethical, polinian leaders, and professionals. Cutting edge, resilient visionaries and innovators reliable, productive experts and implementers, engaging, trustworthy team builders and mentors, and dedicated, transformative supporters and stewards of all creation. But this is not only limited to um, just this one. You can always um, add more graduate attributes, okay? So in SPUS, here's how we did our OBE framework. So St. Paul University Surigao establishes the SPUS OBE framework as a general and institutional guide in implementing university-wide outcome-based education across all programs. The SPUS OBE framework follows the quality assurance principle of plan, do, check, act cycle. So in the plan phase, it starts with the inputs and feedback from SPUS valued internal uh, stakeholders 
industry partners, professional organizations, government agencies, accrediting bodies, alumni, and the community. So such inputs are processed and are used as basis in the formulation of institutional program and course level outcomes. For the institutional level outcomes, the life performance outcomes are maintained from the SPCEM with total consideration of the SPUS vision, mission, core values, as well as the Polinian exit outcomes established through mapping. So such LPOs are cascaded down to the program level, which is comprised of the deferred PEOs, the POs, and of course the COs. So the course level outcomes are processed through a clearly formulated curriculum map that lays down the course outcomes of each course in the curriculum. Such courses or uh, course outcomes are mapped with the corresponding POs since these will establish actual activation and achievement of the intended learning outcomes. So in the do phase, we have the um, outcome-based teaching and learning, which includes the OBTL-based course plan and the OBTL-based course delivery. So for the plan, we have the curriculum map, the syllabus, the modules, the courseware or eBooks. And then for the delivery, we make sure that the teachers um, um, ensure constructive alignment. It should be learner-centered. Um, we consider the independent learning and expanded opportunities are also um, provided. And then after the delivery, we now go to the course assessment followed by the program assessment, followed by the institutional assessment. And then the, these assessments are evaluated and are used for the CQI, um, the CQI activities, which then goes back to the outcomes. So this is how the SPUS OBE framework is um, formulated. And then I have another example here, which is the OBE framework of just one department of University of San Carlos. I got this from their, from their website. So if you notice, we have, um, they have the CHED memo orders, the USC VMG and roadmap, and the PTC accreditation criteria as basis in the formulation of their PEO or the revision. And then they have the department level and the college level um, outcomes. Okay, and then they, of course, um, for the program level, they, they develop or formulate their student outcome. And then after that, they do curriculum mapping and then course outcome specification, course planning, and then course implementation. And then they go for student outcome assessment, and then they evaluate, and then that they proceed to the CQI so that all the results are used in, again, the curriculum mapping, the course outcome specification, the course planning, and even the course implementation. And on the level of the department and college or program formulation or revision of PEOs, um, they also do um, validation and calibration uh, based on the inputs and feedback from the industry, alumni and students and they do PEO assessment, evaluation, and it goes back to the PEO formulation or revision. So this is an example of uh, an OBE framework for just one department, not the entire institution. Okay? 
Are we still good? Everyone? Yes, oh, we're good. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so Bye. let us now have our first workshop, which is <clears throat> about the OBE framework. So... Um, later on, I will, where's the breakout rooms? Okay. So the workshop one is establishing the institutional or departmental OBE framework. It's up to you on which perspective do you want to, uh, to mimic, uh, whether it's institutional or departmental. So this workshop um, is to design and develop a uh, wait to design and develop a working OBE framework for any or all of the following as applicable to you. So you have the university, the college, and the department, or just one of these. So the materials you can get it from this um, link and the workshop files. You can open them in this link. So um, let me unshare first. And then let me show you the. By the way, so you are 95 um, as registered in, in the in the Google Forms registration, but we are now 107 in the room. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm only looking at the participating SPU system schools. We have SPU Dumaguete, Ilocosur, Iloilo, Manila, Philippines, Quezon City, Surigao, and San Miguel. So two, four, six, eight. So we have eight all in all. So, So this is the, the folder that I showed you. The, uh, when you click that um, link that I showed you a while ago, you will go to these um, folders. We have materials. Um, this, is, this has nothing to do with, oh, by the way, you, you can see the um, framework, sample framework of St. Paul University Surigao also here. And then, in the workshop files, it's segregated into workshop one, two, three, four, and five. So for workshop one, which we are going to do now, you have here um, a screenshot of the sample OBE framework of SPUS. And then you have the sample OBE framework of USC for just one department, which is College of Engineering. And then the workshop specification.